This beautiful example of balloon cell nevus was recently shared with the group by Dr. Corey Georgeson, a dermatopathology fellow at the University of Pittsgrove, and it was kindly kindly posted by uh, Jonathan Ho from the Kiko platform. This is an important case as the entity is very rare and can be histologically challenging. It's sometimes quite difficult to make a distinction between balloon cell nevus and balloon cell melanoma, as I'll show you later. In fact, when I when I was training, and I think I, this is borne out with my own experience, balloon cell melanoma is much more common than balloon cell nevus. And so if you see a melanocytic lesion with balloon cell change, I think it would be very wise to spend some time looking at it to make sure you're not missing a melanoma. Now, balloon cell change is probably due to some sort of degenerative change uh, with uh, vascularization of the melanosomes. And the balloon cell change can sometimes be very focal, or sometimes it can uh, affect the whole of the nevus, or virtually all of the nevus, so that it can be quite difficult to make a diagnosis unless you hunt around jolly hard and you find uh, evidence of melanin production. Anyway, this is an absolutely beautiful case. I'm just going to zoom in slightly so that we can have a look at it. This is this is one of the nicest examples I think I've ever seen. And the diagnosis is not particularly difficult because we've got superficially we've got nests of neva cells, but the deeper part of the lesion is almost completely composed of balloon cells. And we'll have a little bit of further look and this is quite nice because one can easily contrast the two cell populations. Now balloon cells can show a variety of features. Sometimes they, they have a clear cell appearance, sometimes they have a rather granular appearance and sometimes they're rather more bubbly. And when they have a bubbly appearance, they can sometimes look a bit like sebaceous cells. So that then is going to raise a differential potentially of a sebaceous carcinoma if we're looking at a malignant lesion. I'm just going to zoom in a bit closer. And in this case, the diagnosis is, is, uh, is very obvious because there are the nevus cells and here are the balloon cells. And I just wanted to draw your attention to the morphology of the balloon cells. They're very large. They're, they're huge cells. And the cytoplasm in this example is, is focally very granular and focally clear cell. The, the nuclei tend to sit right in the middle of the cell. It's, they, they are generally very hypochromatic. But occasionally you'll see small vesicular ones. I think it's important to note that one does not typically see nu vesicular nuclei with nucleoli in, in balloon cell nevus. And so if you find that, you should always be on the alert for something more worrisome. Uh, and similarly, if you find a mitotic figure, well, then I think you're going straight into a, 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 a diagnosis of melanoma. Now, I thought it would be quite nice to look at some other balloon cell lesions. And to do this, I'm going to exit uh, Kiko and pull up a PowerPoint presentation as we see, as we see here. And this is a, <clears throat> an, a nice example of balloon cell nevus, where there are only a, a, a few scattered balloon cells. People make a big deal about whether it's a balloon cell nevus or a nevus with balloon cell change, and they have a cutoff figure of 50%. That seems to me to be an entirely pointless observation. It doesn't really matter to me whether there's 5%, 10%, or 90%. I just call them balloon cell nevi and leave it at that. And this one is actually 
rather interesting because if we, if we look at the high power on the right hand corner or quadrant you can see the balloon cells have rather granular cytoplasm with stippling of melanin pigment but in this one and even more so in this cell you can see that it's multivacular that it's very bubbly with these vacuoles which are actually indenting the nucleus and you can see how easy that might be to think of it as a, as a sebocyte and if the whole lesion was composed of these cells you, you might make a mistake in diagnosis of suspicious carcinoma so you have to be very careful when you're looking at these lesions now this one's quite exciting because this was the very first balloon cell nevus I ever saw and it goes back oh gosh somewhere between 30 and 40 years so it's it's a historical case for, for me and this one is a is a almost 99 percent dermal and it's composed totally of balloon cells and so it would it, it would be very hard to make a diagnosis and say to distinguish this from a xanthomatous process until but really carefully searching i managed to find a little bit of rather more conventional nevus with uh, abundant melanin pigmentation so i was quite happy that this was a balloon cell nevus now a balloon cell melanoma in contrast is much more common and the balloon cell change may be present in the primary or you may only see it in the metastasis this this example is a primary melanoma we can see some junction activity at the top of the lesion and even at this at the, this low power magnification you can see very obvious nuclear pleomorphism so i don't think the diagnosis of melanoma is in doubt but when one looks around the lesion the the tumor is composed of rather more epithelioid looking cells with abundant eosinophilic cytoplasm but there are also great big expansile nests of balloon cells and if we look at these in close-up although there are scattered uh, hyperchromatic and pleomorphic nuclei many of the melanoma cells are much less worrisome uh, and you can see how that's those sort of cells could very easily be mistaken for balloon cell nevus cells however uh, searching at oil immersion i managed to pick up a couple of mitoses and there's one in the center there so i think if we combine the nuclear pleomorphism and the junction activity in the mitosis then it's an obvious diagnosis of melanoma and this is another one that, that I saw when I was at St. John's Hospital for Diseases of the Skin in London. And here you can see, again, it's a primary tumor. And balloon cells are not really very conspicuous. They're dotted around the place. So they, they are, are only amount to a small percentage of the tumor. But when we look at them up in, in close-up, you can see they have granular cytoplasm and great big vesicular nuclei with prominent nu nuclei. And if you compare those nuclei with the ones I showed you in the balloon cell nevus, you can see how different they are, that is, on a good day. Now, this is a lovely case that was shared recently on McKee Dam by uh, Diana Silagi. And it's especially nice because we've got a clinical photograph of the lesion. The diagnosis is not difficult because although I, that there's a small there's a small area of junction activity there and there's very obvious melanin pigment there, so I don't think we need worry too much about the whether it's a melanoma or not. But on on high power again, you can see large vesicular nuclei with prominent nuclei and uh, this was this case was even better because Diana gave us some immunohistochemistry and here we see HMB 45 expressed throughout the entire depth of the lesion which is obviously very helpful 
and the key 67 immunostain showed quite conspicuous nuclear labeling and so we know that uh, this is a, an actively proliferating lesion. Uh, I would have also done cyclin D1 because I, I much prefer it to, to a key 67. And this is another case that Kate Stewart from Australian Clinical Laboratories shared very recently. And I wanted to include it because, again, it highlights how subtle the changes are. If, if we look at the in the very high power magnification, one can see some nuclear enlargement and occasional cells have got prominent nuclear lie, but it's pretty difficult to make a diagnosis of melanoma on that one field alone. But here we have HMB45 coming to the rescue and you can see that it's expressed throughout the, the lesion. In other areas of the tumor, there was more obvious or there was obvious junctional ac activity and uh, cytological changes which made the diagnosis of melanoma pretty easy. And this last example is one that Alex Lazar shared with me, and I think it was a metastasis, but I'm not absolutely certain. But the the top two images show you uh, a melanotic uh, melanoma, where it would be very difficult to come to a definitive diagnosis, a mixture of spindle cells and clear cells and, and bubbly cells. But when we looked at uh, other parts of the same deposit, many of the clear cells showed abundant melanin pigment, which made the diagnosis pretty easy. Now, the differential diagnosis of balloon cell nevi, balloon cell melanoma, is quite big. Um, I think xanthoma is probably one of the most difficult differentials because if we look at this example with these two images on the right hand one, uh, I think you'd be very hard pushed to say whether that was a xanthoma or whether those were balloon cell neva cells and you might have to use immunohistochemistry to tell the two apart if you couldn't find any melanin pigment. Now I'm going to show you examples of all of, all, all of the others just to give you an idea. And these will all be high power views. So unless the tumor is composed entirely of, of these images, then the diagnosis is still going to be pretty obvious. For example, here's a sebaceous carcinoma. It was mostly composed of uh, undifferentiated cells but there were very, very occasional foci showing sebocytes. Now, if you looked at that and you decided for yourself that those weren't sebocytes and that they, in fact, were balloon cell melanocytes, then you'd interpret all of this as being melanoma. Now, that wouldn't be a great, a, a great diagnosis, but still I can understand how it might happen. But if you were in doubt, then immunohistochemistry would would get you out of trouble. And this is a clear cell basal cell carcinoma. You can't tell that from this image, but elsewhere there was very typical BCC. And in fact, I've seen quite a few clear cell BCCs, and there's always been more obvious tumor elsewhere in the specimen. So again, I don't think it's a real differential diagnosis. Similarly, clear cell squamous carcinoma, clear cell hydradenocarcinoma. Again, if you wanted to, you could you could go down a a balloon cell melanomatous pathway. But uh, this tumor showed keratinization, and this tumor showed uh, glandular and ductal differentiation. So again, it, the differential wasn't really there. I think this is probably quite a good differential diagnosis, renal cell carcinoma. This case was very kindly shared again with me by uh, Alex Lazar. And um, if you looked at that one image, I, I think clear cell or, or balloon cell melanoma is a very reasonable differential. Uh, again, clinical history would probably be very helpful because it's highly likely that the patient would be known to have had a renal cell carcinoma, but that's not always the case. Uh, so if you wanted to confirm it, you could use immunohistochemistry 
you, using, for example, renal cell carcinoma associated antigen or PAX2, PAX8, CD10, those might all be positive and that would make the diagnosis easy. PCOMA, uh, again, a, a pretty good differential. This case shared with me by Dr. Eduardo Colongi. And with the high power view, you, you, you could certainly think of a balloon cell melanocytic lesion. Uh, but immunohistochemistry, again, would be helpful. PCOMA is characterized by smooth muscle differentiation and melanocytic differentiation. So if you use um, smooth muscle actin or Desmond, um, S100 protein, uh, melon A, and so on, you'd make the diagnosis fairly readily. I like this case very much that uh, was recently posted of hibernoma. It's not something what one sees very often, uh, and this is a really a real beauty showing the the uh, multivacuated adipocytes. But elsewhere, the tumor showed very typical features of uh, of a of a lipoma, and this is a great case here that. Danny Santa Cruz shared with me, oh, about 20 years ago. And it was a very typical AFX, but which showed focal granular cell change, as you see here. Uh, if you had any, any problems with differential diagnosis, I, I suppose CD10 expression might be, might be helpful. And this is a case that Alex Lazar shared with me. Again, I don't think it's really a differential diagnosis, but it's always mentioned in the book, so I just thought I'd show it to, just to prove to prove the point. In in a granular cell tumor, that you you almost always see these large eosinophilic, distinct uh, hyaline in, in inclusions, which label with diastase PAS is shown on the bottom left. And just for completeness sake, that's a, a CD68 stain. So I hope, I hope you've enjoyed this presentation. It's such a beautiful case, and I thought I would end with a high power view from, from, uh, from, uh, from Corey's beautiful example. Thank you very much.